Antonius Mazaldus de Mundis Fira, Episode 3. In Cipi eximis re pains ad summa de umque, elision, ostendens passim manifesto numina spargi. Ac regeringentem concordi foide remolem, elision, arduer resane nostris quoque vir ribus impar. Aut de bo tamen et mundi rectore vocato. Ag gredi ar spernit virtus in fracta labordres. Previously, we translated these two lines, but because they form a unit, we're going to reprise them before continuing on to new material. I begin, and then there were before this a number of infinitives. I begin starting or creeping from the very lowest points, ad summa, to the highest points, and showing ostendanes that, showing here and there, that it is spargi, that it is sprinkled, meaning the whole creation, the sphira mundi, it is sprinkled or strewn, manifesto numine, with the evident divinity, the evident divine presence of the gods, deum. And we mentioned before that deum is actually de orum, a genitive plural. And we made the point that this is not an indication of polytheism on the part of Mizaldus, but simply, so I take it, a convention of the epic genre. And, ach, I am showing ostendanes that regera molem in gentem, that the huge mass in gentem molem, the whole of it, regera, he rules. I take it here that an implicit deum is the subject of regera, that God rules the entire mass, concordi foitere, through a harmonious pact, a harmonious covenant or agreement. The difficulty here is that this infinitive, regere, is absolutely active, and so it might be more natural to say that the mass, molem and gentem, is ruled, but that would require a passive infinitive, regi. Moreover, it's odd that there is no stated subject for regere, and so for me to supply deo makes sense, but here we have what has to be deorum, because spargi is a passive infinitive. If this were spargere, it would be easy to say, showing that God has scattered, but then we have no object. So it seems to me, and spargere needs an object, it seems to me then that the most natural understanding is to take an implied deum with regere. So, and showing that God has that God rules, excuse me, in gentem molem, the entire mass of it, by a harmonious pact. This is neuter, singular, and ablative, showing instrumentation. The task, ardres, is indeed, sane, very difficult, ardua. It is indeed a very difficult task, also a task that is impar. So race here has two adjectives, ardua and impar, both in feminine, singular, and nominative. It's a very difficult task, also unequal to my strength, nostris viribus. Nostris viribus is feminine, plural, and dative. Feminine because the noun here, wis, is feminine. Unequal to my strength means surpassing my strength, far above my ability. This disavowal of the ability to do something, especially in epic, is called a recusatio. The poet says, I can't really do it, I'm not capable, and then he proceeds to do it. Nevertheless, Tamen, I will dare, I will try it, I will attempt it. And, mundi rectora vocato, with the rectora, the guide, masculine singular ablative, with the guide of the world, vocato, having been called upon, having been invoked, and when I have invoked or called upon the help of the ruler of the world, I will advance, agredi are. This is a future indicative of the deponent verb agredi or agredi, third conjugation. And here's the reason, which the colon indicates, a virtus infracta, feminine, singular, nominative, a weakened or destroyed or broken strength, despises labors. And because his strength, although weak, is intact, it's not broken or destroyed, he will not spurn the task at hand. He'll give it a go.